Now, if you can't answer this question, you are likely not fully prepared for the Alex Math Placement Test. So let's take a look at this question. We have 11 over negative 2 minus 3i, and we need to fix this complex number. All right, now, if you think you know what to do, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to walk through the complete solution steps in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help preparing for the Alex Math Placement Test, I have a fantastic Alex uh, Math Placement Test uh, prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video, but basically it covers like uh, 25 plus chapters, everything that you learn in high school level mathematics. The Alex Math Placement Test is an extremely uh, important test for your future, so you don't want uh, to leave anything to chance. All right, so once again, we have 11 over negative 2 minus 3i. Let's take a look at the complete solution right now. All right, so the first thing we need to understand that right here, we have a complex number in the denominator. So we cannot leave this uh, expression, uh, this fraction, the way it is. This is very much like this problem. Let's say I had 1 over the square root of 3. You can't have an irrational number in the denominator in mathematics. Okay, so you're trying to divide by something that is non-terminating and non-repeating. So in other words, we can't have this like this. Okay, and of course, hopefully, you understand this, but how do we deal with this? Okay, well, to kind of rewrite this fraction, 1 over the square root of 3, we would simply multiply the denominator and numerator by the square root of 3 and clean this up. Of course, we would end up with the square root of 3. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is a square root of 9, which, of course, is 3. So basically, we're going to write 1 over the square root of 3 as a square root of 3 over 3. And now we do not have an irrational number, a square root in the denominator. Okay, so this is not like an optional thing in mathematics or algebra. You need to do this. So effectively, this is kind of the equivalent type of scenario when we're dealing with complex numbers because we're dealing with this little i right there. So a complex number is always in the form of a plus b i. So this is a form of a complex number where the A part is the real number part and the BI part is the imaginary part. And I is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay, so down here we have a square root situation. So we're going to have to resolve this. And really this is the whole kind of, a, uh, you know, a main idea of this video. Okay, so uh, now that you kind of see what's going on, how do we resolve this? Well, we're going to have to multiply uh, the denominator and numerator by something called the conjugate, okay? And hopefully you're familiar with that. This is, uh, again, stuff that you should have seen already in like Algebra 1. All right, so you can kind of see I've already done the work here. It's going to take a look at what the conjugate is. So here is our problem. We have 11 over negative uh, 2 minus 3i. The conjugate is basically the same uh, uh, binomial here, right? We have two things, or complex number negative 2 minus 3i. So whatever the sign is, this is minus. All we're going to do is put the opposite sign. If this was plus, we would put minus. This is minus. We're going to put plus. So negative 2 plus 3i is the conjugate. So what we're going to do, okay, is uh, multiply both the denominator and numerator by the conjugate. Now, we're not breaking anything because if you kind of take, uh, you know, stand back for a second, let's just look at this right here, okay? You're, you have negative 2 plus 3i divided by negative 2 plus 3i. Anything divided by itself is just 1. So we're not, you know, changing the problem. We're just using this little kind of trick to get rid of um, uh, that any i's or square roots in the denominator. So at this point, basically we have one big multiplication problem. So we're going to have to multiply 11 times negative 2 plus 3i, and then we're going to have to multiply these two binomials uh, right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with the easy stuff first. Let's handle this part of the problem. So 11 times negative 2 plus 3i, we'll just go ahead and use the distributive property. So 11 times negative 2 plus 3i, just simply distribute that 11. So 11 
times negative 2 is negative 22, and then 11 times 3i gives us 33i. Okay, so that is our numerator, okay, and we'll come back uh, to this here in a second, but we basically uh, kind of uh, polished up that numerator, and this is it, okay? But now we're going to have to do some uh, work here on the denominator, right? So this is going to require a little bit more work, but let's go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so now um, here we have negative, uh, negative 2 minus 3i times negative 2 plus 3i. So what is this situation? Well, this is no more than like in, let's say, a basic algebra problem. Let's say a 2x plus 1 times x minus 5, right? So this is a binomial times a binomial. So how can we multiply these two right here? Well, you would just use the FOIL method, first, outer, inner, last. But when you're um, dealing with the conjugate, you could also uh, see that we are dealing with the pattern a minus b times a plus b. So to find the product, and this is a, uh, the pattern here, if you notice, it's the same pattern. We could just um, use the difference of two squares, square negative two, and square three i to kind of simplify this. Now, a lot of you um, use this uh, kind of procedure, this technique, you know, in your classes, that's probably what your teacher is showing you. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use the FOIL technique. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the FOIL method. That's, again, that's first, outer, inner, last. Basic algebra stuff, so let's go ahead and do this right now. All right, so we're going to find the product here. So we're going to do the first. So that's going to be negative 2 times negative 2. This is our first. Okay, then our outer is going to be negative 2 times 3i first. Outer, our inner is negative um, negative 3i times negative 2. That's our inner. And then our last is negative 3i times uh, positive 3i. That is our last. So let's go ahead and just uh, do this one by one. So what's the first? Well, this is going to be negative 2 times negative 2. That's positive 4. All right, so what's the outer? That's going to be negative 2 times 3i. That's negative 6i. What's our inner? That's going to be minus 3i times a negative 2. So that's going to be a positive 6i. And then our last is going to be a negative 3i times a positive 3i. So that's going to be a negative 9i squared. Okay, so now let's go ahead and continue to clean this up right here. And uh, let's go down here. So we can first uh, see we have 4, negative 6i plus 6i. So these are going to cross cancel. We can get rid of those right there. So we're left with 4 minus 9i squared. All right, so let's go ahead and take this a step further again. We have to get rid of all the i's and i squared. So what is i? Okay, this is the definition of an imaginary number. So i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Now, if I square i, okay, both sides, i squared is going to be what? Well, i squared will be equal to negative 1, right? So these are things that you definitely need to know when you're dealing with the complex numbers. So i squared is equal to negative 1. So I can replace this i squared with a negative 1. So that's what I'm doing right here. So now we have 4 minus 9 times a negative 1. So negative 9 times negative 1 is uh, positive 9. So now we have 4 plus positive 9 is 13. Okay, so this is our denominator. So let's go ahead and put this all together. So recall, when we multiply the numerator, 11 times this negative 2 plus 3i, we ended up with this right here. And then when we did all this work right here, we got a 13. And this is our final answer. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, there is a lot of math on the Alex Math Placement Test. And you don't want to go in there uh, underprepared because that will have uh, negative uh, consequences as you really do want to place into the best math course for you. So make sure to check out my Alex Math Test Prep course. Again, you can find a link to that in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.